dominated by rhythm and blues. Since the beginning in Blackpool in 1968, Jethro Tull have consistently maintained a unique style despite all the changing fashions. With Ian Anderson standing one-legged at the front, playing flute and humming at the same time, Jethro Tull turned out records like Thick as a Brick, Aqualung, Life's a Long Song, and of course many, many more. Well, in a moment, we'll be joining him live with just about an hour to go before they appear on stage. But first, a taste of the music which has proved so enduring. Jeff Hotel there, and as part of their 25th anniversary celebrations, they're on tour. They'll be having something of a party down at the Fairfield Halls in Croydon, South London tonight, in a little more than just an hour when they go on stage. Before they do, we can join Ian Anderson on the set live tonight. Ian, happy anniversary to you. Well, thanks very much. Ian, I feel I should say, um, call you Jethro. Has anybody ever done that? Uh, yes, I suppose a lot of people do, but I have to point out Jethro Tull is a very large family of about 22 different people who've passed through the ranks of the band over 25 years. So it's, uh, I mean, the personification of Jethro Tull as, as an individual is a, is a dangerous pursuit. Indeed, <laughs> but the re I know, uh, but I'll pursue it anyway. The reason it is, is because of those early days when you were sort of dancing around as sort of a cat weasel of rock, weren't you? And people sort of thought, well, this chap must be called Jethro Tull. Well, I suppose a forgivable mistake being the guy who stands in the middle and, uh, you know, does most of the singing and, and what have you. But it, it, it really, is, it's always been a band. I think most people who follow the band know it's a band, and I'm Ian Anderson and Jethro Tull is the collective entity. Indeed. But Mr. Anderson, it's a very different sound that you have. You can't really see exactly what your influences are. Could you tell us what they are? Well, it began really when I, I guess when I was a schoolboy, I was listening to Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, Sonny Terry, Brownie McGee, Sonny Boy Williamson, Bo Diddley and all those guys, and that... Uh, interest in the blues is what tidied me over through my couple of years at art school into beginning to play with a band which eventually got its uh, big break at the famous marquee club where most of the well it was in the middle of the blues boom at that time you see people like fleetwood mac were, were about john mayle and of course eric clapton people like that started there with john mayle's band so as part of that blues boom that was the main thing i guess a little bit of folk music and classical music has uh, you know crept in if you hear me playing uh, A little bit of Bach there, but it's, to me, it's still playing the blues. We're looking forward to a wee bit more of that later on. You mentioned some of the great names there. Um, how some of them have survived, and obviously so has Jethro Tull as a group. What do you think? What do you put down the longevity to? Well, the amazing loyalty of our audience, really, because they they put up with a great deal. I mean, Jethro Tull is probably one of the most confusing bands ever to grace the planet. I mean, we have so many different influences, so many different people having been in the band and brought their own musical styles into the group. And but uh, have you kept the audience with you? I mean, who's going to be there tonight, for example? Are you going to have any 16-year-olds? Um, <laughs> yes, I would think that there's really two age groups out there. There's, there's that, there's that um, sort of you know god bless them the older ones the, the 35 to 45 year olds who've been with us a long time but then there's the i suppose that sort of 18 to 25 year old group which makes up on a on an average night probably close on half the audience and the other nice thing is it's kind of mixed between boys and girls these days so it's not the the predominantly male 25 year old that we that we had when we first started off now after you made it big um you went away a wee bit but then you came back and you've been touring the eastern block in recent years what was it like there were you known there when you went there <laughs> make it sound like a rather dodgy Spanish or Italian car that has to be sold in the East now. Um, now, we haven't really been away. I mean, we, we, like a lot of bands, had a particular surge in popularity, which for us occurred probably in 73, 74. But basically, before and after then, we've maintained a fairly even profile. But we do play in a lot of places, obviously including the Far East and South America and uh, places where certain other rock bands don't choose to go. But uh, the bulk of our concerts are still in the... Uh, Germany, most of mainland Europe, North America, and so on. Now, in the past, you've suffered from throat problems. Was there ever a time you thought you might have to g give it all in? Yeah, usually on Mondays. <laughs> in the mornings, that would be, would it? <laughs> yeah. Well, in, any morning after a concert, it's not a good idea to try and talk to me for a little while. But, uh, I mean, in a two-hour show, 
um, obviously, you know, I'm pushing myself to the limit. The problem is being a flute player. I don't get much. Uh, I don't get much time off for good behaviour in in the uh, in the instrumental choruses because half of them I have to play as well. What can people expect from your show tonight? And of course, everywhere else you go around the UK. Um, well, the, the inevitably, I mean, it's probably important to say we're not really celebrating our 25th anniversary. Our record company is celebrating our 25th anniversary. We're, we, we last year were celebrating our 24th, and next year, with a bit of luck, we'll celebrate our 26th. But these days, inevitably, the music we play is a, is a curious mixture of very old stuff, stuff from the middle, and one or two new things, indeed things that might have only been written last week. And, and that, that is the truth. We always have a couple of pieces in any show that have, uh, have never been seen by an audience before. So it, it really is a big mixture, but it clearly goes back to you know, the, the, the blues influences of 25 years ago. That's where we kind of start off the show with a reference to our early days at the Marquee. Your own PR team has came up with the description of you in the early days as a band of scruffy, hard-up musical vagabonds heading for the big city. You're in the big city. Give us a taste of what we can expect later tonight, please. Um, in, 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 uh, in, what, in what sense? You mean in the musical sense? I thought we just covered that. No, no, sorry. We were asking you to play. We'd like to hear oh, a bit more Oh, you were asking me to play. Well, it's, it's kind of difficult because I'm up here all on my own and the guys are all down there waiting for me to go back and join them. So it would, it would take some uh, extraordinary act of, uh, of faith for me to just fly off this balcony and join them like no, that. I'll tell you what, Ian, we've got a better idea. We've uh, recorded your sound check earlier on so we can look forward to listening to the sound check you did a wee while ago. Well, that, right. gets, that gets me off the hook nicely, doesn't <laughs> it? Thank you. Nice talking to you. <laughs> and you. Cheers. <laughs> Well, one more cigarette, I got my history. It'll be a lovely uh, concert tonight, I'm sure.